Hello everyone, welcome back. This is part three of Why They Lie. And if you haven't seen parts one and two, you need to go watch them now. And if you have seen them, thanks for coming back. We're glad you're here. We've missed you. Sorry for taking so long, but uh, wanted to put a lot of work into this so everything would make sense to you. Now, before we get started, I do want to share a video with you. I'm not going to play the video all the way through. I just wanted to share it with you so that you can watch it if you're interested. It explains a lot of the past deceptions that led to the current condition we are in now, with the globe model being worldwide, all across the globe, the cartoon ball. And uh, it all happened centuries ago, like we said. There was a prophecy about it, that it was going to happen, and it happened just like the prophecy said. And it has a lot to do with the history lesson you learn in this video. It's a connection that connects the Jesuits with the Pythagoreans, I mean with Pythagoras, Copernicus, Tycho, Kepler, Galileo, Einstein, etc. And it's really good imagery, really good narration. I suggest watching it probably before you watch this video, but if you're not patient, you can just watch this video and then go back to it. You guys are smart. You probably know a lot of this history just from the history you learned in school, but um, this gives a lot of the missing parts. Okay, makes everything make a lot of sense. So I suggest you watch it. Again, it's on the Big Mag channel. I'll leave a link in the description for you. Um, so I hope that helps you guys out if you're researching this and really interested. But um, we're going to go back now where we left off in the last video. And that's talking about a man named Admiral Byrd. Okay. So here he is right here giving an interview. And he puts out some important information about Antarctica. He's very vague. He tries not to say too much, and you can tell from his body language at times he's rather uncomfortable. And he's someone who kind of, you know, says some things about Antarctica that I wasn't aware of and makes you kind of get intrigued by Antarctica. And the more you dig, the more you find out there was some crazy stuff that will turn pretty much anybody into a conspiracy theorist and make you want to go there and find the edge of the earth. <laughs> okay. So um, listen to what he has to say. We've condensed it down and sped it up a little bit so that you can hear the important parts and understand what's going on before we move into the really crazy deep stuff about Antarctica. Okay, so listen to him and take some notes. Admiral Byrd, you've been to both the North Pole and the South Pole. Is there any unexplored land left on this Earth? that might appeal to adventurous young Americans? Uh, yes, there is. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. This is a tremendous So challenge. there's a lot of adventure left mm -hmm down at the bottom of the world. So I'm willing to say to you that uh, there will be a number of expeditions that will follow, I think, uh, year after year, at the bottom of the world, because the government has really become interested. But why this interest in the uh, bottom of the world? Nobody living down there, is there? No, it's, um, it's pretty cold. There's only one permanent resident, that's the Emperor Penguin. The little ones live further north. I tell you one reason they're interested. It's by far the most uh, valuable, important place left in the world for science. That's why the scientific groups all over the nation are really interested. But more important than that, it's, uh, it has to do with the future uh, of the nation, those to come after us, or even uh, during your lifetime because it happens to be an untouched reservoir of natural resources. And, uh, you know, as the world shrinks with an ever-increasing acceleration, far-flung places, once useless, like we thought the North Pole was, and no man's land, become very useful. Uh, the bottom of the world will be important, not only to us, but to our allies. No woman's ever stepped foot upon the Antarctic continent, and it's the most peaceful place in the world. Well, I'm sure that won't last very long. Well, I'm sure that won't last very long. Admiral, you speak of the resources of Antarctica. What are they? What, uh, 
What are the natural resources there? Well, uh, we've found enough of coal within 180 miles of the South Pole in a great uh, ridge of mountains. It's not covered with snow. Enough to supply the whole world for quite a while. Well, uh, that's, that's the coal. Now, there's evidence of uh, other many other minerals. Uh, we are pretty sure there's oil. Now, that coal shows the bottom of the world. Now, by far, the coldest spot in the world. Where that coal is gets 100 below zero in the winter. Well, uh, it was once tropical. So uh, we think there's oil there, and there's evidence probably uranium there. Is it any secret? Is there uranium there? That would be the only thing that would be practical to uh, actually go after, I suppose. Everything else would be economically uh, unfeasible, wouldn't it? Well, as we recklessly expend our resources, the time will come when we can, we'll have to go after that stuff down there. Well, you know, I, I avoided what you said about uranium. I'm not sure about that. I don't want to have the world fight over the Antarctic. And Robert, is there a competition among other nations to try to get information about uh, Antarctica and to possibly to secure some of these resources? Well, uh, yes. Uh, there are now seven nations very much interested. Uh, well, you know, as I said, it's the most peaceful place in the world, but I don't think it will be for long. Well, but I don't think it will be for long because of this intense interest on the part of, uh, of other nations and this nation. Well, Admiral Byrd, are yeah. private expeditions a thing of the past? Is, is expedition and exploration, making expedition and exploration now a purely a government function because uh, of the tremendous no, cost organization? No, I don't think so. I think down south, it may be more or less a thing of the past. I think down south, it may be more or less a thing of the past, but not other, other expeditions. That go there. A lot of them going off now. This latest expedition now on the way is a government expedition, I take it. Yes, that's the government. Have a bear, may I ask you, is there a great difference between the uh, top of the world and the bottom of the world? Uh, the there is. Now, uh, the North Pole is the center of an ocean 10,000 feet deep. The South Pole, the center of a plateau, 10,000 feet high. Wow. So a lot of cool things covered by Admiral Byrd here. And... If you want to watch the full interview, we'll have it linked in the description. But this guy just gave us some really good information about the resources involved with this place and how it's not going to be peaceful for much longer, which surprisingly, the most peaceful treaty we've ever had in the history of the world occurred with these world powers pretty much guarding Antarctica, making sure it's safe for science because of the penguins and ice. They want to study them all the time around the clock. And so that's what happened. We have your first scientific peaceful treaty and it's still in effect today, okay? But after this man, Admiral Byrd, dies, some really conspiracy theory type stuff starts happening and then NASA forms and it's, it's really crazy. We're about to get into that in just a second. But um, you noticed he said during the video probably 12, 13 times the bottom of the world and he kept repeating that, so you would understand it's at the bottom of the globe and there's nothing left to see. And um, I don't think they found the bottom of the world. I believe they found something different. But um, there was a lot of operations he was a part of, Operation High Jump, because of course you have to get over the ice wall, okay? Followed by Operation Deep Freeze. And um, the Flat Earth map, of course, always usually has an ice wall around it or some sort of circle kind of like the Bible says the circle of the earth and what's beyond that is what most of us believe to be the firmament and where it meets the earth not exactly an edge that you can fall off of like they have in the famous pictures that you saw in your history books or the ones floating around on YouTube anytime you look up flat earth they just see a disk that's not the shape of the earth at all and um, the earth has a foundation you know, it's got a firmament, lots of different things, but um, I'm not too sure about what's beyond Antarctica. There could be more land, okay? Really have no clue. There's lots of different maps floating around with things beyond Antarctica and claims of finding really old maps that have continents beyond it. Um, could be lots of resources out there. They could be hiding a lot more, but I really don't know. But either way, there is a large ice wall, and they did explore beyond it. And what they found caused them to do some really crazy things immediately after the death of Admiral Byrd. So let's look at what someone has to say 
His name is Rob Skiba. If you've never heard of him, here is his website called testingtheglobe.com. It's a really cool website where he breaks down a lot of his research and findings, but he's got a YouTube channel. He was a biblical scholar at one point, not wanting to prove the earth was flat. He's looking for the curve and ends up becoming one of us crazy people wearing the tinfoil hats. But uh, really, really good guy, really unbiased, but has uncovered some really cool things, especially about these operations in Antarctica and how they really kind of reveal that they discovered that the Bible was true and that there was a firmament. So pay attention to the stuff he has to say. He does a really good breakdown of this, and um, it's pretty cool information if you weren't aware of it. So pay attention and take some notes. Okay, let's put the chronology here. You got, uh, again, Operation High Jump 46 through 47, Operation Deep Freeze 55 to 56, he dies in 57. NASA's formed in 1958. Then uh, after Operation Deep Freeze and whatever weirdness took place down there, everybody leaves there, leaves Antarctica, and they go and form this Antarctic Treaty and put that into place in 1961. Uh, the original signatories were the 12 countries active in Antarctica during the International Geophysical Year 1957 to 58. These countries had established over 50 Antarctic stations for the International Geophysical Year. Something happened down there after Operation Deep Freeze and presumably about the time that Admiral Byrd died. So all these nations that I just talked about here, they, they leave there, they come back, they sign this Antarctic Treaty. At the same time, NASA is formed. And, and right away, they, the United States and Russia start launching high-altitude nuclear bombs in the atmosphere. It get, if they're trying to avoid a conspiracy, they're not helping with the names. You've heard me say it before. I'm going to say it again. You know, you got Operation High Jump, Oper Operation Deep Freeze. NASA's formed, they signed this Antarctic Treaty, and then when you look at the high-altitude nuclear bomb tests, the, the Thor missile was also used to lift warheads into near space to conduct high-altitude nuclear explosion tests. These shots were collectively called Operation Fishbowl. It's a series of high-altitude nuclear tests in 1962 that were carried out by the United States as part of the larger Operation Dominic nuclear test program. Now, with the tinfoil hat on playing conspiracy theory here, the flat earthers are claiming, and and I think it's a reasonable claim, that you know, if that model is true, then we know we have a circle, the circle of the earth as described in the Bible, surrounded by Antarctica, the outer rim, that has a two or three hundred foot uh ice wall, cliff that keeps everything in, hence Operation High Jump. You gotta get over that, right? Uh so it looks like, at least from the flat earther perspective, that probably during Operation Deep Freeze, they may have found the edge of the dome, presumably anywhere from 800 to 1,200 miles inland from the coast. Uh, then everybody pulls out, signs this treaty, says nobody can go back except under the express guidelines of the international community that signed the treaty. So then all of a sudden the United States and Russia engaged in these high altitude nuclear tests and the United States calls theirs Operation Dominic within which we have Operation Fishball. So it appears that whatever happened in Antarctica, everybody got kind of maybe nervous or excited or whatever and said, okay, what is the deal? Our assumption is the solar system is, you know, set up in the Copernican model and, um, but yet maybe, maybe they found a dome and they started to question all that so the first thing they do is send out probes to go wait a minute what in the world if this is if we're in a dome how high does this thing go so they start launching high altitude nuclear bombs and if you look at the videos on operation fishbowl and starfish prime and all the, all those high altitude tests i mean it looks like they're hitting something up there um i mean at least from a conspiratorial tinfoil hat wearing perspective that's what it looks like. Now, this is what blew my mind. So, you know, you talk about Operation Fishbowl, but check this out. I'm gonna take you to, um, I'll put the screen share back up here. 
take you to a uh, one of those name websites. I like using behindthename.com. Look up the name Dominic. And again, let's just double check it here. Dominic, D-O-M-I-N-I-C. Look up Dominic, D-O-M-I-N-I-C. From the late Latin name Dominicus, meaning of the Lord. Fishbowl is part of Operation Dominic. It looks like they are sending high altitude nuclear bombs to test the fishbowl of the Lord, i.e., the firmament. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely one of those things to make you go, hmm. steroid Santa Claus kicks and deals it's a long fly ball going back back and the ball shatters the sky bringing the ocean itself down into the stadium oh Simpson just broke this dream's reality wide open Well, guys, I know this has been a crazy fast-paced little adventure on this part three, and I'm sorry for that, but I just really wanted to answer some questions, pique your interest a little bit, so that you'll do some digging. Many of you think that, hey, anybody can go to Antarctica, it's easy to explore, and we should be able to have a picture of the edge if there is one, and that's some really good questions too, okay? So if you're interested in that, there's a really good video here that breaks down the Antarctic Treaty, why we can't do the whole picture of the edge scenario. And it's it's very easy to understand. You just need to understand how the treaty works if you've never read it. It's it's quite odd that it, it did form with the conditions it formed with, with all of these countries sharing land for the first time ever peacefully and for science, you know, and this was before the global warming days. So you need to understand that we weren't worried about this stuff melting and all of that. So it's really cool. Taboo Conspiracy is the ones that put this together that's been floating around on the internet. People are uploading it like crazy because it's a really good video. But um, you can watch it. I haven't watched the whole video because I kind of understand the premise behind it. And um, But if you're interested and you really want to see why we can't go see the edge, other than the fact that it cost an arm and a leg about $40,000 or more last time I checked, because I really actually wanted to go there. <laughs> and uh, I have summers off, so it would have been perfect. It would have been cool. But um, I don't have that kind of money. And Bill Nye challenges to go to the edge, to drive a car to the edge, as a matter of fact. <laughs> so I tried. It went in the ocean. But... Um, you know, it would be fine and dandy. I would go to the edge in a heartbeat if I had the protection and I wouldn't end up vanishing and dying like the people that have tried before me who have gone on private expeditions. Okay, and they had yachts and all those cool things and resources that I didn't have. So, um, 
I would I would love to go there. Of course, we're all intrigued by it. It's kind of like the Truman Show movie where he runs into the edge. When, once you kind of know it's there, you're obsessed with it. And um, try not to get too obsessed and sound too crazy. It's it's a lot to take in. And um, the crazy thing is that the Bible is true. God's word is true. And we are safe from aliens or anything like that on either model. But especially the fact that we are protected. We are special. We are unique. We are a beloved creation. We are one of a kind. And that's why I'm here. It's not to uh, be famous and be well known. I want God's word to be known and his truth to be seen. And I want you to find that love that is unspeakable, full of joy, something that I've experienced. And I, I hope and, and pray that you guys can. It's something really awesome. And it's so great. It, it, you can't explain it. It's it's um, unspeakable joy. And that's that's the best way to sum it up. And I hope you guys are doing good. Everything's going great for you. Thanks for tuning in to part three. I think this will be the last one, unless you guys uh, want something else, but I, I think this will be the last one of this series of why they lie. There are a lot more reasons to why they lie, but I wanted this to be short and as simple as possible. Okay, so thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you're doing good. As always, God bless.